Hey, I'm Mark, and this is Riffle, Shuffle, and Roll. Today we're going to be taking a look at Forbidden Bridge. If it's your first time visiting the channel, be sure to hit subscribe and the bell so you're notified about new games every week. All right, well, without further ado, let's dive in and see what this game is all about. Out of the box, you'll get an instruction booklet, a game board, two dice, one with action symbols, and one with numbers, 16 gemstones, four explorers, and each explorer has their own canoe. There's also the cliff mountain, as well as the idle mountain, and most importantly, the bridge. There is a little assembly required. You do put the bridge together yourself, but that is really simple. Each plank on the bridge is numbered. You will attach the feet to the bottom of the cliff and the idle, and you will snap this platform into place. It is all pretty simple to do. To set up for the game, you will put the cliff and the idle mountains into the board. After assembling the bridge, you will slip the bridge ropes over the pegs on the platform and on the cliff. You will place six gems in each of the hands of the idle. Place each explorer in their canoe, and then place the canoe in the starting space, which is under the idle mountain. Now that setup is complete, you are ready to begin the game. The youngest player goes first. Forbidden Bridge is a racing game. The objective of the game is to get your explorer down the river and across the bridge in order to collect gemstones. An explorer must collect two gemstones to win the game. They need to have one in their backpack and one in their canoe. And after they collect two gemstones, they will take their canoe back down the river to the finishing spot. The first player to do this wins the game. But it is not so simple because along the way, players will be able to move their opponents to a more dangerous spot on the bridge. They will be able to steal gemstones from a neighboring explorer or they will be able to wake the angry idol by rolling this part of the die. We're gonna say that the youngest player is the blue explorer, so they get to go first. They rolled a six and an explorer icon. What this does is allow a player to move an opponent's piece that is up on the bridge from a safe spot to a more dangerous one. If there are not any players on the bridge, you can disregard this icon. So for now, player one gets to move their explorer six spaces. Each square of water counts as one space, and players must also count this space right here, down by the cliff. So the blue explorer gets to move one, two, three, four, five. They've beached their canoe, and they're gonna pull their explorer up onto the first cliff space. That is spot number six. Play continues clockwise around the table, and now our yellow explorer is going to take their turn. They get to move three spaces, and they rolled the gemstone icon. Now what this would allow them to do is steal a gem from another explorer that is directly beside them on the bridge. Now a player can choose whether they want to move their piece first and then steal a gem, or steal the gem first and then move away from that opponent. The yellow explorer rolled a three, so they're gonna move their canoe three spaces. And that ends their turn. Time for red to make a move. They rolled a six and an explorer hat. So again, if there were any players on the bridge, regardless of whether this player was also or not, they could move an explorer from a safe space to a dangerous space. This player also gets to move six. So let's see what that looks like. So red gets to move their piece six spaces. So one, two, three, four, five. Now, according to that rule, they are going to land right where the blue player already is. When a space is completely blocked, you get to move to the next available one. So because blue is already here on spot number six, red gets to leapfrog over them and get up here on the cliff. 
All right, let's fast forward, get some pieces on the bridge here and get straight to the action. The blue player has gotten their piece onto the bridge. They are the first to do so. And red is coming right up behind them and they rolled the green explorer icon on the die. So they get to move blue from this relatively safe spot to one that is a little more dangerous. Then they're going to move their piece five spaces. One, two, three, four, and five. Now it's yellow's turn. They rolled a three and the idol icon. When the idol icon is rolled, the angry idol must be activated immediately. So that's the first thing the yellow player will do. The blue player has fallen from the bridge. When a player falls from the bridge, they must move to the closest space on the map they can. So the blue player has come back into the jungle. From there, they will have to move across the river, which is only one space, back up onto the cliff and continue their journey to the gemstones by the angry idol. And yellow completes their turn by moving three spaces. They finally have beached their canoe and they have moved up onto the cliff. When a player rolls the gemstone icon and they're able to steal from another explorer, they must be beside each other in the same space. So on the bridge, they must be on the same plank. When they're in the jungle, they must be within the same jungle space. To do that, the player can steal before they move or after they move. So let's say red rolled it and then moved to the same plank as the blue player. And they must have an empty backpack. So here the red player steals the gem from the blue player and gets to put it in their backpack. On their next turn, assuming they do not get knocked off the bridge, they are able to go the other direction. They do not have to complete the journey to the end of the bridge. They may go straight back to their canoe. A player must always be moving towards a gemstone, whether that is a gemstone in the idol's hands or one that has fallen onto the map. In this case, the blue player on their next turn will use one of their movements to recover and then they can move towards this gemstone here. When picking up a fallen gemstone, the player does not have to land exactly on that space. They can pick it up in passing. Now notice when the angry idol shook the bridge, the red player lost their gem. Well, now that gem is free for anybody else that happens to be on the bridge to pick up if they can. And the red player must also scoop it up. So they're gonna have to stay on the bridge a little longer, pick up the gemstone, and then make their way to the canoe again. Gemstones that fall in the river are picked up and they are immediately returned to the idol's hands. Gemstones that fall on the outer edge of the board or even off of the board are moved to the closest jungle space to it. One last thing to keep in mind is that a player does not have to roll the exact number needed to end up on the platform at the idol's hands. But only two explorers can be on this platform at once. If there are already two players on it, the player waiting must stay on this plank until one of the explorers has left, making room for them. Those are all the basics of the game. Once a player has a gemstone in their canoe and in their backpack, they can work their way back to the finishing spot. That player is the winner. Hey, all right, well, that was Forbidden Bridge. Uh, definitely a game for kids or families. Now, um, I do like to hang out more on the mass market side of games. Um, the hobby market's all right. There are a lot of games that I like that you can really only find through a specialty store or Amazon.com when it's available. However, I do get a lot of enjoyment out of simple games or games that don't necessarily appeal to the hobby side of things. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, people like what they like. I don't personally enjoy playing games anymore that have 
a 30 page instruction manual and take hours to play and even longer to really get good at. I just want simple experiences that I can enjoy with anybody. And this is definitely something that I can pull out and play with my family or with my friends if they get in the right mood. It is childish, but it is also that childlike fun that will bring back a lot of nostalgia and good memories of playing games from when we were younger. I had physical 3D games like this when I was little, like Tipsy Tower and Hungry Hippos and stuff that was very exciting to watch, even though the, the rules in the play was very simple. Now this is just the, the kickoff to a small adventure series that I'm gonna be doing on the channel. Forbidden Bridge is the start. From here, I have Goliath's Fireball Island Race to Adventure, which is a step up from this, but not quite as complex as Restoration Games version of Fireball Island. I am super excited. This is a type of game that I haven't played in years, and I forgot what kind of simple fun they could actually be. That is it for now. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep on playing, no matter what kind of games you enjoy.